she shows up and then she sets the building on fire. This video might be a bit of a stretch. Hi, frenemas, welcome back. It's an odd day. And I have something to say. About a true original, Evie Oddly. But let's not put the cartilage before the horse. Shut up. Before the end of the video, you will understand that joke. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Jake, a board-certified internal medicine physician, and I'm also gay. And I also love Drag Race. And I need your help. Only 23% of people who watched my last Diseases of Drag Race video are subscribed to my channel. Just 10 death drops on the subscribe button can feed a hungry drag queen for a week. So, Evie Oddly and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a disease that can cause extreme mobility of joints, hyperflexibility, and fragile body tissues. Evie is a queen who bends over backwards for her art, literally. And while Ehlers-Danlos causes a bunch of problems for her, it's also the reason that she's able to please with her pliability. I'm certain, though, that she does a good deal of physical conditioning to be able to maintain her flexibility because flexibility without strength is just flaccid. Ehlers-Danlos is a genetic condition or a condition inherited from your parents at birth. There are many different types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and there is a different mutation that goes along with each type. And now it's time for a little genetics lesson. Let's start as basic as possible. DNA is the genetic material that gets passed from parent to child. Humans have 23 different chromosomes and they get two copies of each, one from mom and one from dad. Within DNA are things called genes and each gene contains the recipe for a protein. If that recipe is wrong, your body will still follow the recipe to make that protein. It'll just follow the wrong recipe. It's like baking a cake and forgetting to put in the yeast. Do you put yeast in cake? Okay, it's like baking bread and forgetting to put in the eggs. Oh my god, it's like baking a cake and forgetting to put in the eggs. Or sometimes it's like baking a cake and adding turmeric. You're understanding where I'm going here, right? There's a problem in the recipe. Okay, we're done with that. Now, most genetic diseases like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome come in one of two flavors, dominant or recessive. In dominant diseases, you only need to inherit one faulty copy of a gene to make a disease. In recessive diseases, you need to inherit two copies, a copy from mom and a copy from dad that is faulty to cause disease. Now, why are some diseases dominant and some recessive? Well, let's break it down and put it into drag terms. So let's talk about recessive diseases first. Now let's say your local club is having a drag show and there are two queens booked to perform in the show. However, one of those queens suddenly develops the flu. Let's well, see. the other queen can still work, right? Not perfect, but if that queen does a good enough job, no one will even know that there was a second queen to begin with. And that's how recessive diseases work. A mutation in either mom or dad's side has the wrong recipe, but the other one has the correct recipe, so your body still makes the protein, and as long as it can do the job on its own, it's fine. You don't have a disease. Now, let's head over to the other side of town. Hateful Hag Bar also has a drag show. Two performers are scheduled there as well. However, one of those queens is an asshole, and when she gets nausea... I wonder how I can talk you out of ever making that face again. Not only will she not perform, she shows up and then she sets the building on fire. I set the building on fire. So that drag show is canceled. That's how dominant diseases work. The protein actively f***s up everything. It doesn't just neglect its job, it burns down the f***ing building. Ehlers-Danlos affects the production of collagen, the most common protein in the body. This protein is one of the primary components of skin, bones, cartilage, connective tissue like ligaments and tendons, and the eyes. Most types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome are dominant conditions. So the defective collagen either hurts the body's function or the good collagen that was made using the right recipe just can't compensate for the fact that the other collagen is missing. Some forms of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome though are recessive. Now, this is not the full scope of what Ehlers-Danlos affects. That would be an hour and a half long video, but here are some of the main organs that are usually affected. Number one, the joints. Joint hypermobility is a very common feature of Ehlers-Danlos. And doctors actually have a ton of criteria to figure out, are you just bendy or are you more of a bend and snap, if you know what I mean. I got it. Oh! They can look at how far your pinky or thumb flexes backward and whether or not your elbows and knees can extend outward and look at hip hypermobility. Number two, the skin. People with Ehlers-Danlos sometimes have what's called skin hyperextensibility. For most people, if you stretch the skin on the back of your hand, it doesn't really go that far and it bounces right back. However, one other criteria for Ehlers-Danlos is that you can actually stretch the skin on the back of your hand or the back of your neck four centimeters without feeling any resistance. Number three, the heart. Okay, this one's gonna require a little bit more explanation. Bear with me. 
The heart has four chambers in it. The left and right atria at the top and the left and right ventricle at the bottom. Why are the left and right reversed? If you put your hand over your own heart, it's on the left side. And while the doctors see it as the right, it's still your left. So we go with your left. Okay, so the mitral valve sits in between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Normally, these valves are one way. So blood flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle and then out through the aorta, which is the big blood vessel that connects your heart to the rest of your body. Now, when blood goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle, blood goes through the mitral valve. It opens up to let blood in. However, it's one way. So then your left ventricle is going to squeeze to send the blood into the rest of your body and that valve is going to snap shut. Oh my god, the bend and snap works every time! <laughs> because of that, it's not going to let any blood back into the left atrium. Now, in order for that to happen, the three leaflets, or the three little pieces that are on that valve, they have to be a little bit hard. Not rigid, right? You can have calcification that actually can be bad, but they have to be pretty hard. And then they snap shut. Works every time! <laughs> but in people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, those leaflets are softer. This causes what's called mitral valve prolapse, or basically a floppy valve that goes back into the left atrium, and often it can let a little bit of blood back into the left atrium. And that's usually okay. A little bit of backwards flow of blood usually doesn't hurt anything. However, that backwash, ew, that's gross, can become more severe with age. Now, the left ventricle can handle some pretty high pressures, but the left atrium, it does not like high pressure pressure. And when you put more blood into the left atrium, you're increasing the pressure. When you put that backwash into the left atrium, it forces it to work harder. Sometimes it can't work hard enough to compensate for that higher pressure, and so the blood ends up backing up into the lungs. In other words, they can develop heart failure. Now, circling back to Evie, Evie has hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's dominant, and doctors consider it to be one of the less severe forms of Ehlers-Danlos. It is mainly characterized by that soft and hyperextensible skin, as well as extreme flexibility, like we mentioned before. One of the key features of this type of Ehlers-Danlos is that people with this type often have spontaneous dislocations of their bones. So, let me unpack how that happens. Your muscles are connected to your bones by tendons. And those tendons are normally pretty stiff. They have to be to hold the bones in place. However, these tendons are more stretchy and soft in Ehlers-Danlos, so that allows the bones to slip away from the muscles and sometimes out of their joint sockets. Now, what's interesting is that in a normal person, a dislocation of a bone can be very difficult to fix. When a person without Ehlers-Danlos has a dislocation, they may need an emergency room visit and a sedation to get that bone back into place. It's exquisitely painful and debilitating. However, for someone with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, it's possible for them to just pop that bone back in sometimes. So the pain is still there, but they can sort of fix it themselves sometimes because the tendons just stretch right back. Evie actually wrote a really interesting piece for Out Magazine that talked about her Ehlers-Danlos, and I just want to read a little bit of that for you. I've always been in pain as early as I can remember, and I simply thought it was growing pains. We wrote it off as such at first, but it was just so bad that I couldn't make it through a school day from the pain or I'd come home in tears. I had to pull out of every extracurricular activity I've ever done because the pain was getting far too much to handle. On the show, I sprained my ankle, and for people with HEDS, that or dislocation of joints is a super common occurrence. I don't experience this myself, but a lot of people bruise extremely easily because the lack of collagen means our skin takes a beating, and honestly, this happens for people who aren't doing stunts on stage. There are so many times where I've slept wrong and dislocated my shoulder. I hope that gave you some perspective in terms of how Evie experiences her own disease. Now, let's talk about treatment. Unfortunately, there is no treatment to heal the joints or help the body make collagen more effectively. Treatment of Ehlers-Danlos revolves around managing symptoms and complications. What each person with Ehlers-Danlos needs depends on the type of Ehlers-Danlos they have and their personal manifestation of the disease. For the joints, physical therapy is a key treatment. It can help with muscle strengthening, which can help to prevent bone dislocation. I mentioned before that the tendons, which connect the bones to the muscle, are more lax in Ehlers-Danlos. While you can't fix that, working out can make the muscles stronger to help them keep those bones in place. And focusing on exercise that doesn't put undue strain on the joints, like swimming, can be very helpful. Also, people with Ehlers-Danlos often have to avoid heavy lifting because the increased strain can cause worsening pain or dislocation. 
For the heart, people with Ehlers-Danlos need to get regular echocardiograms, or ultrasounds of the heart. This is to monitor for worsening heart valve problems. But I would guess that the thing that worsens the lives of people with Ehlers-Danlos the most is pain. Exercise, hot and cold therapy, and seeing a pain management specialist are things that some people with Ehlers-Danlos do to help. There are a lot of other issues that I don't have the time to talk about in this video, but one of the big things I want to talk about is pregnancy. Now, I know this probably doesn't apply to Evie. I don't think she's getting pregnant anytime soon, although I guess it's possible I haven't really asked her about her genitals because I don't make a habit of asking people about their genitals unless I'm, you know, having sex with them. So I guess it's possible, but I don't, I don't think so. I just see her aunt eat her out. Anyway, back to the point. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome makes pregnancy a lot more complicated and dangerous than it already is. In a normal pregnancy, the cervix, the opening to the uterus, stays closed and helps keep the baby inside. However, people with Ehlers-Danlos may have floppier cervixes. Servicey? Ser services? People with Ehlers-Danlos can have softer openings to their uteruses, and for that reason, premature childbirth is a lot more common for women with Ehlers-Danlos. And in patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome that affects the blood vessels or vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, pregnancy and childbirth can actually be pretty dangerous. The uterus and its blood vessels are more likely to rupture or burst. For many women though, having a child is a high priority. Surrogacy is an option, but it can often be prohibitively expensive. Many women with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome don't really have any other choice but to conceive themselves if they want to have a biological child. So with all of that information, I want to talk a little bit about Evie's drag career and what Ehlers-Danlos might mean in terms of her future. Right now, Evie is young and relatively healthy. She's able to do a ton of acrobatics, splits, kicks, flips, headstands, pot de bourree, kickball chains, the spread eagle, flip-flops, knick-knack, paddywhack, give a dog a bone. Stop it. Get some help. But it's likely that as she gets older, her muscles will atrophy or weaken. She might develop more joint problems. And she might have to tone the physicality in her act down a little. Fortunately, Evie has a normal life expectancy with her form of Ehlers-Danlos, as far as I know. That being said, I think we've seen a lot of drag queens get older, and their abilities morph. They're chameleons. They're able to adapt to different physical capabilities. I imagine that Evie will gain new intellectual skills to replace some of her former physical skills. I mean, RuPaul does pretty well for herself, and she definitely hired a stunt double for the Holloslay Spectacular, so I don't see why Evie should have any issue as she ages. I think Evie will figure out a way to do drag lifelong. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you, and if you want to support my channel, please subscribe and like this video. Thank you all for watching, and please go watch my video about Jinx Monsoon's narcolepsy next. I worked really hard on it, and it's great! I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!